All right, hey guys, what's going on? It's that home theater dude, got a brand new episode for today. Today's video is gonna be all about the Monoprice M215 subwoofer. Maybe you guys just got this in the mail, maybe you guys have had it for a while and you just wanna go ahead and uh, double check your settings. I'm gonna show you how to set it up from beginning to end, step by step, from the settings on the back of the subwoofer to the settings on the actual processor itself so that you guys can get the best performance in your space. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into everything and I'll do it right after the intro. Okay, so this is gonna be the THX settings on the back of the Monoprice subwoofer. This is the M215, but you can use this as a reference guide for any of the rest of the THX subwoofers that Monoprice has out right now. So the very first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna turn this level all the way to the left and you're gonna hear a click. That's gonna take you to THX reference level. There's a specific gain already set up in this amplifier that's gonna give you the best performance. Next thing you're gonna do is take this crossover out. It's gonna, you're gonna flick it down. THX is gonna be off and that's gonna take this completely out of the equation. So it doesn't really matter what it's on. It's not gonna be controlled um, via this uh, amplifier anymore. Next thing you're gonna wanna do is take it out of extended mode, turn it into THX mode. And then if you do have that foam port in the front, take the foam port out. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is phase. The simplest way to go ahead and set this thing up is some people don't have to mess with it at all, but if you wanna go ahead and you know dive deep into the actual setup, um, you can actually use this as, as a guide as well. What I'm gonna recommend doing is go ahead and playing a test tone. Uh, you can have 50 hertz, 60 hertz, whatever it is, um, but you're gonna go ahead and play that test tone with your front two speakers going as well as your subwoofer. So whenever you do that, you're gonna be sitting in your main listening position. You're gonna have your buddy go ahead and crank this thing up slowly, right? You're gonna be sitting in your main listening position with a dB meter. And then what you're gonna notice is that whenever it peaks on the dB meter, then you're gonna go ahead and stop. And then, um, so if it stops at 180, then you can go ahead and leave it at that point. So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and play around with this. You can fine adjust it and whatnot to your actual likings. Typically the peak is gonna be the best setting for you to actually leave this on. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this down on zero and then we'll go ahead and mess with that later on if we need to. So for most people, having it at zero is gonna be just fine, but if you're not getting the most breathtaking performance that you would expect, then you might wanna go ahead and do that second thing that I was talking about. So now that we've done the THX settings on the back of the amplifier, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and mess with the settings on the processor itself. So now that we have the uh, THX settings already set up, uh, I would highly recommend that you guys try this both ways and see which one you like better for your um, room and your performance. So now, since this is already set up from THX, we're gonna have a couple different considerations. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and just, this is just for the very first time that you do this, you can crank it up or you can crank it down. I would recommend putting it at zero dB on your level. So with that zero dB, you're gonna be able to, if you want more volume, if you want a little more punch, you can raise it up. You don't always have to, you know, go to <laughs> go to 11 and pump this thing all the way to the right. But I mean, fine adjustments should uh, actually help you out. And then if you if it, if you find that's too much, you can turn it down a slight bit. Okay. Um, so that's why they have all these things on here. It gives you a little more versatility in your setup. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna talk about is gonna be your crossover. So with this one, typically, I wouldn't necessarily have to worry about this anyway, because most people for their setup, they're gonna have a modern preamp processor, and then uh, you're, you're gonna have that LFE control in there. So what low frequency effects is LFE, it's going to give a specific frequency a better um, target than what it is by flicking this thing around by fingers, right? So if you want to use this thing and you don't wanna use your processor, which I wouldn't recommend, I would just recommend letting your processor do it, um, and don't use both. So if you have this thing on on, you're gonna be able to use this crossover. So if your preamp processor is sending LFE and then you come over here and then you put it at 90, um, it's, it's, it's gonna be sending, it, it, you're not gonna get the best performance out of it because you're getting too many ki uh, cooks in the kitchen with that type of setup. So, I mean, you can obviously set it up wrong. So I would highly recommend for most people's cases, just leave the crossover off and then just let your LFE take effect. But if you guys have an older setup then um, and you don't have an LFE type of setting, put this thing on on and then, you know, just make it to whatever you need to be. So it's going to be traditionally, I would say, put it 20 hertz above what your speakers are crossed over at. So if your main front speakers are going to be crossed over at 80 hertz, then you might want to have 20 hertz of roll off. Then I would probably say try to give it as close to 100 as possible. But for most people's considerations, they don't need to use that. 
Next thing we're gonna talk about is this extended mode. You can put it in extended mode if you like. So with that, you're gonna have the foam port in the front. You're gonna plug the, um, the, the port in the front and then you can have it in extended mode. It'll give you a little more sealed performance and it'll dig a little deeper um, with, with those DVs below 20 Hertz. Next thing I'm gonna talk about, we already talked about phase. The same thing applies here. If you're not getting some awesome performance out of this thing, um, obviously you wanna have it in the best position for your room. But um, once you do that and you get it in a really good position, if you're not getting some really awesome performance, I would highly recommend doing that two, two man method or two person method, having someone go ahead and wiggle this thing around while you're in your main listening position. And then hopefully it'll get, it'll fix all those problems that you're having. Because if you have things out of phase, it'll completely drop. It'll completely drop the, um, the, the low frequency effects and it'll almost sound like it's not even on. Cause you have noise cancellation whenever two waves meet each other. Okay, so now that we've done this setup. This is the non-THX setup on the uh, unit. Um, you don't have to, you know, take a picture of this or whatever. Pretty much everyone's room is going to be different on these settings, so don't take any of this stuff to heart, but just go ahead and use this as a reference guide. Next thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and go over to your preamp processor because you're going to have to change some stuff from before because the same gains that you had on your levels for your um, subwoofer are going to be different because the gains are different here now. So, like I was talking about, have it at zero, mess with the stuff over there. I'll go ahead and meet you guys over there in a second. Okay, so this part's really easy. All you have to do is just go into your actual settings now, and then you go into your speaker level adjust. So this is the Emotiva XMC2, and this is basically how you do it. So um, it's, it's pretty simple. Pretty much every AVR and processor has the exact same type of setup. So you just find your settings, your speaker settings. And since this one has the levels right here, you wanna go ahead and start setting your levels. So the best way to do that is it's gonna send a test tone. And the, the, the test tone, you, you can probably hear it right now, but it's kinda of like a low rumble. Uh, typically what it's gonna do is if you have a Denon or Marantz, I would recommend after you go into this setting, it's gonna hear that whoa, little noise, right? So I would go and walk over to your receiver or use your remote and then just turn it up to reference volume which is gonna be either negative uh, 75 or actual zero. And then that will help you out with um, finding these test tones proper because if you do it without it, it's not gonna come out uh, the proper calibration. And if you have something that has, let's go back out of this. If you have something that has a test tone, if, if you see it, it says low right there, I would recommend putting it in medium because medium is gonna give you a little more, um, a, little, a little more wiggle room with having it set up. Uh, with the actual calibration. So on your test tone, I would go in, in this one, turn it to medium, and then there you go. So now every speaker that you have, it doesn't matter if it's your left speaker or your right speaker, all of them are gonna be set to that medium. So make sure you pay attention to that. And then you wanna set your subwoofers up to the same thing as well. Now what you have to do is you get your dB meter. So this is the one I use, it's called the V-like. Um, you can't see it right now, but I'll go ahead and show a picture of it. So this is the v like DB meter, got it on um, Amazon. It was kind of expensive, it's kind of like 50 bucks. But the cool thing is, is it has A weighted and C weighted. All you do is you go ahead and set your target. So this one's targeted 80 DB. And then you can see right now that I already went ahead and filled around with it. So it's kind of already set up the way it needs to be. So, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not making this video so you guys copy these settings. I'm making this video to show you guys how to do it because my settings aren't gonna be exactly the same as your settings. So. What we do is we go in here, we have this sitting at our main listening position, right? And then you go in here and if it's too loud, then you bring it down on your levels. So if you see back there, I'm changing the levels. And at the same time on this one, it's changing the adjustment. So you can kind of see how it's blurred out, but I'm lowering it again. See how it's lowering down? And then if it's too quiet, then you just pump it up. But you're targeting 85 dB. So as you can see back there, it's at 10.5. And at my main listening position, it's at 87-ish, 88. So I need to bring it back down. So you bring it back down on your settings, and then that should help out with your dB meter. So I think it was 9.5, and if I stop talking, it'll probably level out. So you want it to hunt around 85 dB, and I think 9.0 is gonna be the setting that I have on mine. So this is basically how you set the levels for a subwoofer. Either it be the THX setting or the normal setting. 
Um, it doesn't matter if you guys have a monolith subwoofer or not. Um, uh, sometimes uh, Odyssey calibration can get it wrong as well. Um, typically on Odyssey calibration, you're gonna be searching for 75 dB as your, um, as, as your reference mark. But if you wanna pump it a little bit hot, then you can do that as well. But this is for the Monoprice THX certification type of setup. All right, well, I guess that concludes the settings of the Monoprice M215 subwoofer. If you guys have other Monoprice THX certified subwoofers, that will basically help out as, as a guide to set these things up. And even the second part of this video, how to set it up as a traditional subwoofer calibration, that can help out anyone that has, you know, just any subwoofer in their room. And it will help double check the auto calibration that you guys do uh, to see if it was very accurate and also to get, you know, the best actual sound and performance from the subwoofer itself. So in between the two, I like the THX subwoofer settings a little more. At my main listening position, I played, you know, the, the same clips back to back between the THX calibrated settings and the normal subwoofer calibrated settings. Uh, between the two, I liked the THX settings a little more. It gave me a little uh, better depth in the actual delivery. But if you wanna have more output, the normal settings are run two dB lower on the processor. Um, in comparison to the THX gains on the back of this thing. So if you guys are paying attention at the, at the beginning of the video, whenever I had the subwoofer set up on the normal settings, it was at zero dB. And even though it was at negative two on that one, you can pump it up plus six and then plus 12. So you have a lot more headroom on the other normal traditional subwoofer calibrated settings than you would on THX. So if THX gains aren't enough for you and you want more SPL and you're just a base head, um, you can definitely do that as well. And you have a little more capability and a little more um, output capability with the normal settings. But for my liking, I like the THX settings. I would like to you know listen to some uh, more movies more clips and uh, like, so like a football game or something to see which one would work best overall because this is my normal uh, you know, uh, family room. So, I mean, some of you guys might have this in a dedicated theater room. One calibration may work best for everything, but I just want to go ahead and make sure that's good for all things that I listen to before I make, before I make up my mind. Besides that, this thing exploits all kinds of different areas in your house that need uh, uh, addressing. So the door was shaking. It, the door hasn't shook in a long time, um, basically because I've decoupled pretty much everything else from the floor. The AC grate was shaking. The uh, speakers themselves on the ceiling were shaking. The projector was shaking. Everything was shaking. So it's definitely something to consider if you have something of this output that you need to address all that. It's not just fun and games when you buy something this awesome and this big and this capable you need to address all the rest of the stuff in your room because there's no reason of having this much output if it's not usable. So you wanna be able to use it as well. So at these higher settings, you wanna be able to experience and enjoy it rather than be like, well, why is the dishes in the kitchen shaking and I can hear that? So something to think about. Well, I'm gonna go to this video here. The next episode I'll be doing is with the Edge of Tomorrow. I'm gonna to be seeing if this Monoprice M215 2000 watt subwoofer will chuff on that opening scene. It is the make or break for a lot of people's um, ideas about buying a subwoofer. I don't understand why it is because if you're worried about port noise, why get a ported subwoofer? But uh, <laughs> that's just my two, two cents on it. But I'm gonna go ahead and see if this thing will chuff on that opening scene and also do a couple more demos with this thing to, uh, to actually test out the, uh, the base capabilities on it. And like I was talking about at the beginning of the video, all of the demo discs and the giveaway, they're all done. So please don't ask in this video or further videos or even that video. You guys know the rules. I mean, just, just please abide by them. If you guys have won one, you will know by now. But I really appreciate all the love and support you guys have been giving me over the last couple of years. It's been amazing. And I really can't express my uh, gratitude anymore by just doing you know these giveaways as, as, as much as I can. So make sure you like, favorite, share, and subscribe. Hit the little notifications bell. It really helps out see these videos as soon as they come out. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thank you